George's Island, named after King George II, is a glacial drumlin within Halifax Harbour, Nova Scotia, Canada. The island was first armed with a seven-gun smoothbore battery of cannons in 1750. Its role was to protect the settlement of Halifax from a sea attack. During these early years, there were large numbers of Acadians in prison during the Acadian Expulsion, 1755 to 1763. During the American Revolution, the island's defenses were updated and renewed. Prince Edward built a fort on George's Island in 1798. He named it Fort Charlotte, after his mother, Queen Charlotte. The need to update Halifax's defenses became a priority during the American Civil War, with concern of the conflict expanding. Fort Charlotte was also reconstructed as part of these updates. Built was a south-facing upper battery with eight 9-inch rifled muzzle-loading guns and four heavy 10-inch RMLs in the underground lower battery. The center of the island became a maze of underground magazines and tunnels to service the batteries. During the 1870s, the island became the site of the submarine mining establishment, where they would manufacture and deploy mines to create defensive minefields within the harbour. In 1902, quick-fire guns replaced three of the upper battery's rifled muzzle-loading guns for defense against fast torpedo boats. During World War I, the defenses included an anti-submarine net that stretched to shore from both sides of the island. During World War II, an anti-aircraft unit was stationed here and they were the last soldiers to serve on the island. The first people to live in the area were the Mi'kmaq and they opposed the establishment of Halifax in 1749. They believed the British had broken their treaty obligations. Hostilities ended with the Peace and Friendship Treaties of 1760-61. The island was made a National Historic Site in 1965. So I'm in Halifax right now, we're going out into the harbour and we're going to George's Island. It's part of the Halifax Defence Complex. And there's a fort over there, Fort Charlotte. The island was named after King George II. It was originally George Island, and then they changed it to George's Island. So we're gonna go over and check that out. And here's a look back at Halifax. Halifax Harbor, beautiful city. So here's a look at the ferry that we're on. First ferry of the day, pretty packed. They just recently opened up this uh, island to the public. So it's pretty popular. Before it was pretty much off limits. I'll just give you guys some more of a view of the harbor. So the island is right in the middle of the Halifax Harbor. So it doesn't take long, five, ten minutes to get out here. Yeah, there's some old buildings here. Uh, I think there's a lighthouse here and a fort, Fort Charlotte. So here we come up here. You can see a couple old buildings up there on the island already. We're just coming into dock. So you can come here by tour, but you can also come here with a private boat or your own boat. They actually have a spot where you can dock up. One more look back towards Halifax. Yeah, beautiful city. Beautiful day too. So here we are coming up to the dock. Here's our boat that we came over on. So some of the earliest buildings no longer exist, except for maybe some of the foundations. So here's the first area, submarine mining establishment. And there's like a replica of one of the mines. These must all relate to the, the mines that we just read about because it's in the same area. So this is what's left.
George's Island is one of the five national historic sites that together are known today as the Halifax Defence Complex. And there's a nice aerial view of the island. Looks pretty cool. Protected one of the main naval bases of the British Empire in the 18th and 19th centuries. British imprisoned at different times about a thousand Acadians, including children on this island. Most were deported, but some were detained here until 1764. There's a nice look over at Halifax. And some more foundations from the old buildings. So some areas are off limits, unfortunately. Small magazine was part of the submarine mining establishment. For safety, the mine primers, fuses were stored and tested here. Yeah, they have some really nice information panels around here. Georgia's Island remained a useful military installation after Canada took over Halifax's defenses from Britain in 1906. During the First World War, nets were installed on either side of the island to stop German U-boats from reaching the Inner Harbour. Yeah, then we all know about this, if you're from the area. Then on December 6, 1917, disaster struck. Two Allied ships collided, causing the mightiest human-made blast before atomic bombs, the Halifax Explosion. The explosion destroyed Halifax's dockyard magazine, so Fort Charlotte became a vital backup. RMS. Olympic passing over submarine net, 1916. Halifax explosion survivors. Very cool, if you like history, it's definitely a place to come. Another old building down here. Yeah, that's the cool spot, just right out in the middle of Halifax Harbor. The first lighthouse operated from 1876 until 1916, when it was destroyed by fire. The current light replaced it. And that lighthouse is right over there, you can see. This place where you are, it is this place where you build your house. Here where you build your fortress. This place where you want to walk on the land. That is exactly where I found it from. I, the native. That is where I'm from. That is my land. It is the fact that the Creator gives me my territory forever. We survived. Thrive. Yet even now, after all these years, I still sometimes think back to our time on this island. So very glad to have got away alive. So up this way, we're coming up to Fort Charlotte. There's a nice look at the lighthouse. George's Island is a stretched egg-shaped hill called a drumlin, a rock, sand and gravel. It formed under the kilometers thick ice during the last ice age. There's a nice view.
So I'm not sure what this is. I think there's a sign out front. We'll have a look at that here in a minute. Pretty cool. I like looking around these kind of places. Securing the fort. Fort Charlotte's main gate dates to the 1860s. A still existing cranking mechanism in the guard room rolled the bridge, spanning the ditch back into the fort. The guard room was the fort's security office and prison. Okay. This is the inside of the fort. New fort for a new era. Just talks about Fort Charlotte adapted to keep up with advances in technology. We load these guns with shells. Three spiral groups of four firing studded projectiles that will stop the powerful ironclads well out of the water. We'll be ready. Arming the big guns. Fort Charlotte's lower battery was a fort within a fort. Yeah, there's a look at the lower battery. The exterior of it. And here's some of the guns they have down there. Remains of the lower battery trolley tramway system. Quick fire guns, 1902. Replaced three of the upper battery's rifled muzzle loading guns. So until recently, this island was off limits to the public. So it's great that they opened it up and we can get over here. It's a great place to come for an afternoon or a morning. Uh, the closest trenches, uh, the Canadian spot in at Vimy Ridge, uh, about half the distance from where we are to that wall was the German trench. Uh, so it was extremely, extremely close. You could have a conversation with the enemy uh, just in a talking voice. Uh, and with the Canadians, what they developed and perfected, uh, especially the 25th Battalion, which is uh, the uniform we have here, uh, the 25th raised in uh, at the armories here in Halifax in 1915 uh, was a instead of having large-scale battles uh, the Canadians would rather uh, and the other armies uh, the British Expeditionary Force and the French later on adopted 
uh, a system called trench raiding rather than large scale attacks. Uh, this is a system of about anywhere from you know, a couple of guys, five or so guys, all the way up to 150 uh, or so men. Uh, that would, the idea was it was a night attack uh, that would happen where you have this small group of guys uh, crossing no man's land, crawling the whole way, uh, cutting the wire, getting into the enemy trench, and the idea was just to destroy stuff and get out as soon as possible. So in there, you know, they'd, the mission would be to smash the machine gun nest that's across the way. Uh, most of the most of the objectives were steal prisoner, get prisoners. So uh, they'd go in there, they'd go into the German dugouts, and they would grab guys in their sleep and get out of there. And the idea behind this is you're doing little chips, chips away at the enemy. This will conclude the exploration of George's Island in the upper portions of Fort Charlotte. On the next video, we go underground and explore Fort Charlotte's lower battery and tunnels. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.